Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector, and I want to welcome you to another one of my videos. In this video, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about speculation. And I am doing this because this topic has been on my mind for quite some time. In fact, I am the host of a, a weekly series that comes out here on YouTube in which I actually talk about speculation. And speculation is like, it's one of the things that we do as comic book readers and collectors. But in this video, I want to spend a little time exploring the pros and cons, if you will, of speculation. And like most of my videos, I'm not going to give you the exact answer because I really don't know if there is an exact answer. I think that this is one of those topics that is a little bit good, a little bit bad. Everyone's going to have their different perspectives and their opinions on this thing. And I think that that's part of the fun, if you will, of exploring this type of topic. So I'm over the course of this video going to throw out a few things for you guys to think about. And I'm honestly looking forward to seeing what your thoughts are down in the comment section. So I want to invite you to leave those comments behind so we can mix it up. And if you are a first time viewer, I definitely want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel. That way you get to be part of the fun. And this is indeed fun. But one of the things that I think about when I hear people say that we are speculating too much, that speculation is a problem. One of the things that I readily think about is that there are some folks that have either lived through what happened in the 90s, heard about what happened in the 90s, or are just assuming some things that they're seeing now are very much like the 90s. And if you don't know what happened in the 90s, consider yourself lucky. Uh, but no, what, what happened in the 90s is that there was a major comic book crash. And part of what was happening during the 90s, well, there were many things that were happening, but part of what was happening was there were all of these, you know, incentive covers and different types of variants and, uh, you know, foil this and foil that. And if you take a look around at what's happening right now, you see a lot of those same things. The Negan Lives book that has come out with the gold foil and the silver foil and now the bronze. And it, it is very reminiscent for a lot of people Oh, it, with what happened back in the 90s. But here's the thing. That is night versus day. What is happening now is not the same as what happened back in the 90s. Yes, they are using foil again. And yes, there are lots of variants. And yes, there are cover this and cover that and incentive of this versus that. But one of the main things that is different is the fundamentals of the industry. Back in the 90s, the comic book industry itself was not on sure footing, not in any way, shape or form. People were overextended. Lots of credit was being given out and people did not have the ability to repay the, the loans and the credit that that were, you know, was being extended to them. That is not necessarily the case these days. And, and I for one, believe that comic shops are actually on a better footing now than they were in the past. I believe that the industry as a whole is on better footing now than it was in the past. I mean, look at all the money that Marvel is raking in. Look at all the deals and the TV shows that are being, you know, stood up right now. And, and to me, that is a sign that there is money that is flowing around. And, you know, Marvel is not filing for bankruptcy, right? Because that was what happened back in the 90s. The while they have some similarities, the fundamentals are very different. And so some people will say, well, you know, maybe it's a bubble and, you know, bubbles are bad. Bubbles are also part of any kind of healthy economy. There are cycles. There are market corrections. These are things that happen in normal economies, normal healthy economies. And so could there be a correction? Yes. Is that bad? Yes. Does that mean that the bottom is falling out of comics? I do not think so, right? So those people that, that are quick to say that what is happening right now is just what happened in the 90s, I don't know if that is, is true. That That is not necessarily my opinion, but I understand. I understand why people are quick to make those comparisons because the situations are similar. 
until you peel the onion. One of the other things that I'll point out to you is that back in the 90s, there were people that had no interest in comics that were rushing out to buy multiple copies of comics because they thought that they were going to get rich, right? You're talking your average person that is like finding out what a comic shop is for the first time, going to that comic shop and then buying lots of comics and then thinking that they are going to get paid off of a comic that was just printed last week. That is, again, a major point of differentiation between what happened in the past and what happened now. You have a lot of people that, yes, are speculating on comics, but many of the people that are doing this are actually comic book collectors and readers and people that have an interest in the hobby as a whole that are choosing to speculate and using some of the money that they are making off of selling books to actually buy additional books. That again is a major difference between somebody that goes out for the first time, buys a bunch of comics and sticks them in the closet and just assumes that they're going to get paid off of those books. Again, just a major point of difference. But I want to spend a little time for the rest of this video, again, kind of talking about the pros and the cons of, of speculation and all of the hype that is out there right now. And again, I'm looking forward to hearing what you all's thoughts are on this topic as well. Whether you believe or don't believe the speculation is bad, I think that everyone has an opportunity to share their opinions. Now, one way that I believe that speculation is bad is if people are getting caught up in FOMO and making irrational decisions. FOMO, fear of missing out, uh, and irrational decisions are basically you see some hype around the book and you go out and you spend a crazy amount of money for that book and you have zero interest in that character. You have no interest in that character. You're only buying it because you see prices actually going up for that book. And you are assuming that you should buy that book because everyone else is talking about it. To me, that is not necessarily the reason to buy a book. I know a lot of people will see a character get hot and they will buy that book because they have an interest in that character and they have an interest in that book and they feel like prices will continue to go up. So they will buy that book because they want to possess that book long term. I get that. I don't necessarily do that, but I get the rationale behind it especially if you have an interest in that character, but you've been focused on other things and all of a sudden you see prices go up, you realize that if you don't do it now, then you might miss out. And so I definitely get that. But if you are making some irrational decisions where you're spending you know, a lot of money, a lot of hard earned money on something that you're really not interested in, something that you're not going to read, something that uh, you're just going to like stare at, right? I mean, uh, then, then that is a situation where I think that speculation could be detrimental, not just to the individual, but also potentially to the hobby as a whole. Now on the flip side, if speculation is driving someone to become aware of a story or a character or an artist or creator of some sort that they've never heard of before, I think that that actually could be a good thing. When some news breaks out there in, in the world of comic dumb, when like there's a, a character that's potentially going to appear in the MCU or in a streaming service or something gets optioned and you have never heard of that character before and now you are exposed to that character and you may go out and read something and you realize that that is actually a pretty cool character, that to me is a good thing. That is a benefit to speculation. I heard about Raising Dion as a TV show. I watched and I was like, this is actually pretty cool. Then I found out about the fact that it was a comic book and I was like, that's actually pretty cool, right? Stranger Things, kind of the same thing that happened to me. The Boys, same thing. I had no clue that The Boys was actually a comic. I heard about the TV show, watched the TV show, thought it was really cool. Again, speculation can be a good thing if it is used for positive purposes. Just like any other emotion, if again, if it is used for the good, then it's definitely something that is beneficial, but it, there's always the two sides to the situation. So again, speculation isn't necessarily a bad thing if you're finding out about something that's cool that you did not know existed before. 
One of the other upsides to speculation, and I kind of talked about this a few moments ago, is that if you have a book in your possession and you bought this book for cover price because you wanted the book or you, you, you were interested in the character at the time and suddenly that book becomes hot and you decide that you want to sell that book to make some money, I don't necessarily, again, see that as a bad thing, right? Because you own it, it's your possession, you can sell it, and who you're selling it to probably really wants that book, right? And so that transaction isn't a bad transaction. And again, as I alluded to earlier on this video, there are people that have books that they bought off the rack that they want to sell because that book got hot, then they take those proceeds and they go out and buy a Golden Age books or a Silver Age book or a bronze age book or something like that they're basically taking money from one place and channeling it back into the hobby again that's not necessarily a bad thing either for the person that is selling the book or the person that is buying the book especially if it is a fair transaction uh, it's maybe a little detrimental if if someone is you know ha the book has an FMV of a hundred bucks and it's being sold for a thousand dollars that could be detrimental to at least one of those parties but if there is a fair transaction between a buyer and a seller and both people walk away from that transaction happy again I don't necessarily see that as a bad thing especially if that money is staying within the comic book community, is staying within the hobby and isn't necessarily, you know, again, an outsider that is doing this for the purpose of making money to, to extract that money from the comic book community. So again, there, there are lots of positives to this. A huge downside to speculation, of course, is manipulation. And there are a lot of people that have created videos here on YouTube that talk about uh, market manipulation. I am not a huge fan of that in any way, shape, or form. I believe that any type of manipulation uh, is detrimental. It's detrimental to the individual, and it's certainly detrimental to the hobby. And so um, manipulation is just, it's just, if money is involved, there is always the potential that someone won't necessarily do the right thing. So this is one area where there there is no positive for this one. I think that this is just, uh, it's just all bad. It's all bad. And so again, you know, a lot of people have kind of asked me my thoughts on this. Really uh, dug into this one all that much, to be honest with you, because I haven't taken the time to do the analysis to, to connect all the dots that maybe others have connected to truly know that there has been manipulation. But what I will say is even in spite of doing that type of analysis um, and connecting those dots, I recognize and understand that manipulation of the market does happen and it happens in every single market. It happens in every single industry because there is money involved. And if there is money involved, there will be people that will try to take advantage of other individuals. And like I said, that's that's not good for anybody except for that person that is that is doing the selling and or the manipulation. One of the things that I've actually heard people talk about as a sign that we are headed towards a crash, we're headed towards a correction, uh, you know, speculation is bad for the industry is when we start to see these companies, these outside influences that are offering up shares of comics. So they will essentially buy a, a really nice comic book and will offer people the ability to own shares of that comic. And so the belief is that when that comic goes up in value and is sold at a later date, those proceeds from that sale are divvied among the shareholders. People view that activity as being detrimental to the comic book market. And I, I, I feel a certain way about this because I can see both the good and bad. The, the truth of the matter is that what we see happening with these different companies that are out there, and I've actually spoken about some of these companies here on the channel, is that what's happening is similar to what has happened with houses and purses and cars and other types of collectibles. This is nothing new, nothing new at all. This is basically some 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 people that are investors that have a, a method for making money that have identified 
the comic book community as a means and as a mechanism for them to actually make money. And all they're doing is replicating what they've done in other industries here. So I can see why people are upset about that, but but look at it from the other side. The fact that these people are taking their hard-earned money and going out and buying a 9.2 of X-Men number one is, is actually an endorsement to some degree of what is happening with comic books and collectibles. People that have the money to do something like this would not invest in something that had some some fundamentals that were unsound. I don't know that these people would rush to set up these types of organizations and buy these collectibles if they believe that the bottom was going to fall out. So it's actually an endorsement of what is happening in the comic book market. In fact, I was actually on one of these, these apps earlier today and, and basically what they were saying is, hey, we have this 9.2 of X-Men number one. You should buy into this because there is a chance that the X-Men will appear in the MCU. And if that happens, the value of this book is going to go up because books that are associated with the MCU actually go up in value. So they were literally pointing to all of the speculation and all of the hype that surrounds the comics uh, and the industry as a means to get people on board. And rest assured that many of the people that are probably standing these things up and also invested in these things are not necessarily comic book collectors because we want to own the comic. We don't want to own a share of the comic through an app. That is not what motivates us. But the point is, is that they are using some of the speculation to basically get support and get investment. Now, the bad side, the downside, of course, is is that by having these outside funds come into the hobby, it is actually driving up prices, which means that it makes it hard for your average collector to actually buy some of these comics, right? Because if the, the higher end books go up, that drags up the, the 1.0s and the 2.0s that we might actually be buying of some of these expensive books. So there is some good and some bad that actually comes with this. So one of the other points that I want to make about, about speculation is that, and I'm going to be completely honest, it's fun. It is fun to think about the possibilities of what could happen with the streaming services and the movies that are coming out. It is fun to think about what might be the next team or the next character or the next storyline that we could actually see on the big screen. And so again, we spend a lot of time as a community talking about speculation, but I think the part of it is because it's just fun. It's fun to, to pretend and to participate in this dialogue. I personally do not think that all comic book collectors are money hungry. I think that we are generally interested in these characters and we are honestly just having some fun talking about it. But again, I can see the other side that if, if you are a person that is maybe a little old school or has an old school mindset that, that all of the talk around speculation and the movies that are being optioned and what's going to come out, how you might view that as being detrimental. But at the end of the day, a big part of it, honestly, is just people that are enthusiastic about comics just having a good time. And again, I am honestly looking forward to reading you all's thoughts down in the comment section because I really don't think that there is a right or wrong to this thing. I think that there are many shades of gray. <laughs> and I'm honestly, again, looking forward to hearing what you guys think. With that said, I am going to wrap this video up. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, I certainly want to encourage you to hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment behind so we can mix it up in the comments section. If you need to reach out to me, you can do that in one of two ways on Instagram at Reggie Collects, or you can send me an email to Reggie at ReggieCollects.com. Take care.